Now we are going to see about the colorability concept. First we look into the definition of coloring. Coloring is just an assignment of colors to the vitreous of a graph so that no two adjacent vitreous get the same color. Uh, here I am giving example of a cycle C4. It contains four vertices. Here there is no restriction of using colors. So we can use up to four colors in this graph. So I am assigning the colors 1, 2, 3 and 4. Next we get into the definition of chromatic number. The chromatic number chi of G of a graph G is the minimum number of colors needed to color the graph. So we find chromatic number we have to to find chromatic number we have to use minimum number of colors so that no two adjacent vertices get the same color for the cycle c4 we need two colors to color the graph so chi of g for this graph is 2 the next definition is n colorable a graph g is called n colorable if the chromatic number of a graph is less than or equal to n. So we can say the cycle C4 is 4 colorable or 3 colorable or 2 colorable. Okay, is it clear? Okay, next. Next definition is H chromatic number. The H chromatic number is also called as line chromatic number or chromatic index. Uh, the chromatic number is different from the chromatic index. Okay. Uh, chi the, it's, it is denoted by chi dash of g, the h chromatic number notation. Okay, the chi dash of g is the minimum number of colors needed to color the edges of a graph. Uh, here I am using the graph with four vertices that is as usual cycle C4. This graph needs two colors. So it, because it contains four edges, it, uh, chi dash of g is two. Okay. Similarly, we can say that a graph is to be n h colorable if chi dash of g is less than or equal to n. Next, we look into the famous theorem that is phi color theorem. Okay, the def uh, statement of phi color theorem is every planar graph is phi colorable. Uh, I think you all know the definition of a planar graph. Okay, first I will tell you the definition of the planar graph. A graph is said to be planar if it can be drawn on a plane without intersecting edges. That is the planar graph shouldn't contain any intersecting edges. Okay. We get into the proof of the phi color theorem. The proof of this theorem is by induction of the number of vertices. That is number p of points. For any, gra any planar graph having p less than or equal to 5 points, the result is obvious. So let us assume that all planar graphs with p points is phi colorable for p greater than or equal to 5. Now consider G is a planar graph with p plus 1 points. Then G has a vertex v of degree 5 or less. Because we have one result that every planar graph G with P greater than or equal to 3 points has at least 3 points of degree less than 6. That is, degree must be, its degree must be less than or equal to 5. Okay. Now we remove the vertex V from the graph G. So the resulting planar graph G minus V is phi colorable by induction hypothesis. Okay, so we consider a phi coloring of G minus V where CI colors are the, or C I are the colors we are going to use. That is, uh, I varies from 1 to 5. Suppose if some color, say CJ, is not used in, the, in coloring vertices adjacent to V, then by assigning the color CJ to the vertex V, the phi coloring of G minus P can be extended to a phi coloring of G. Hence, we have to consider only the case in which degree of V equal to phi and all the phi colors are used for coloring the vertices of the graph G adjacent to V. 
Okay. Let V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 be the vertices adjacent to V. And that they are colored with colors C1, C2, C3, C4 and C5 respectively. Now let G13 denote the subgraph of G, G minus, that is G minus V. That is, uh, it is a graph obtained by removing the vertex V from the graph G. So that all the, all the incident edges on V are also removed from the graph. Uh, okay. Now let G13 denote the subgraph of G minus V induced by those vertices colored with C1 or C3. Suppose if V1 and V3 belong to different components of G13, for this you have to see the figure 1. Okay. Uh, then the phi coloring of G minus V can be obtained by interchanging the color of the vertices, assigning the color 3 to all the vertices which are colored 1 in the component of G13 containing V1. You have to imagine this graph so that the edges incident on V are already removed. But in the graph I am putting that 5 edges. But uh, but by default the 5 edges that is which are incident with V are not in the graph. Okay. Okay. In this phi coloring, no vertex adjacent to V is colored C1. Therefore, by coloring V with C1, a phi coloring of G is obtained. The, in this way, we can extend the G minus V phi coloring to the graph G. Okay. Next, we see the second case. The next case is, if V1 and V3 belongs to different components of G13, then in G, there exists a V1, V3 path, all of whose points are colored with C1 or C3. For this, you look into the figure 2. Wait, I will show. See this figure. Here also, the edges incident on V are uh, already removed. Okay. You have to imagine the path from V1 to V3. That is, that path are colored with vertices, uh, colored with color C1 and C3 alternatively. Okay. Hence, there is no V2, V4 path along all whose points are colored with C2, C4. Hence, if G24 denotes the subgraph of G minus V induced by the points colored C2 or C4, then V2 and V4 belong to different components of G24. Hence, if we interchange the colors of the points in the component of G24 containing V2, that is, we are going to color uh, the vertex V2, that is, the color uh, containing C2 colors with C4. We are going to replace the color 2 with 4. That is that what I am saying. We get a new phi coloring G minus V. In this, no point adjacent to V is colored C2. Hence, by assigning color C2 to V, we can get a phi coloring of G. This completes the induction and also the proof. I hope the phi color theorem is clear now. Thank you.